Hi, this is Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. For Christmas this year, my son received a 80-pound crossbow pistol. Now, this was purchased at Rural King. This was under $13. Uh, I saw this. I thought it would be really cool. I mean, I wish I would have had one of these when I was his age. So, we're going to open it up, assemble it, and we're going to get some arrows through this thing. So, I kind of peeked in the box earlier. This is still all sealed up, but this is going to be quite a bit simpler to assemble than the Jaguar crossbow that I purchased for him before deer season. So here it is all plastic up. It came with three bolts. Basically the assembly process is going to be putting the limb onto the riser and stringing it up. So here's the body of the crossbow itself, the crossbow pistol. One of these was out in the store, so I could inspect it before I purchased it. This extension in the back is actually a cocking aid. There's a thumb release on top, so you're going to push this in, and then that's going to give you leverage to cock the pistol. Uh, the limb and the limb bolt is included in the box. And again, this is, this is an 80-pound limb on this thing. In a smaller bag was the string, uh, the knock ends for the limbs. I'm just going to put those on right now. There's the bare, the bare limb end. And I'm just going to press these into place. That's going to protect the string. Now I have uh, front and back shim and two uh, rubber pads. I'm going to isolate these pads on either side of the fiberglass. That way we're not pressing into it. I'm assuming that's what it's for. Okay, so here is the front of the crossbow pistol. And if you look at my shims, I've got uh, one of them is shaped so it just slides right in there. So I'm going to put that in place. I'm going to take one of these little rubber pads, slip it in. Now this is marked uh, Cobra system. So I'm going to have to make sure I've got the writing up because I'm sure it won't shoot as good as if the writing is upside down. Okay, I'm going to go back with a second rubber pad on top of the limb. And then this last shim is steel. This is the flat steel that goes on top. Okay, it did come with a set screw with an Allen head. And that's going to screw right in from the front. Now we'll have to see the vibration on this if this needs any type of like uh, thread locker at all. I'm not going to use any now. We will see if that causes me problems later. So before I worry about lining these limbs up left to right, I'm actually just kind of holding them in place, more or less, while I take up the slack with the screw. And then I can adjust it till I'm centered. Okay, and you can see right here and right here there's little witness marks, little white witness marks. That's going to be your center, so you're going to reveal the white line on either side. Okay, so I'm not going to get crazy with this because this is a fiberglass limb. Now what that steel shim does is it spreads the area out instead of putting a, all the pressure on this limb just at one single point. It widens it out to you know an inch wide or whatever this happens to be. But I am torquing it down but I'm not getting silly with it. This uh, Allen wrench dictates the torque that you put on it. So you would not want to add a breaker bar on that and go any harder. Uh, once I get the end of the Allen wrench and I give it like a tweak or two, I'm happy with that.
Now to string this up, we had a tool when we did the the Jaguar crossbow. This thing is not supplied with it, but it seems like it's quite a bit less powerful. I'm going to switch the camera around and we'll see. I'm going to get this onto the floor, see if I can get a string on this. So I've screwed around trying to put the string on here for a little bit. I'm going to improvise something else. The Jaguar crossbow was 175 pounds. Now that had a foot stirrup and a cocking cable that helped me out. With this thing by myself today, um, it's not very conducive to that. So what I'm going to do is I got a piece of paracord here. I'm going to make a little foot stirrup. Okay, so I just ran ran the paracord through here. Not in there. Okay, so that's going to give me something to pull against. And I also have, uh, I need a longer piece here. This is actually a ridge line. I'm going to take, you know, about 30 inches. I've already got a bow line on because this is an existing ridge line that I use. And I'm going to throw a figure eight knot on the other end. All right, I've got my loops on the knock ends now. That might give me a little more pull on this thing. Okay, I did get it strung. Getting the ropes on the outside knocks gave me a lot of help. This would definitely be easier with two people though. Okay, done. A key thing with this is just make sure your string is seated in the limb knocks, which this one is. Okay, so if you were to break a string in the woods and did have one with you, again, this was just my ridge line and a spare piece of paracord that I had, and then you're back in business. So, as far as arrows go, this came with three bolts. Okay, so that's not much, but again, this was, I think this was $12.99 when I bought it. I did upgrade, I did purchase uh, an extra dozen, and then I got a deal on 60. So this was on Amazon, uh, the smaller pack was at Rural King. So if you buy bulk, you know, you're going to get a better price on this. But the true question now is, is this a viable tool for anything other than just playing around? You know, this is a small dart, a uh, small bolt, this is. Uh, really can't use a broadhead of any type on this thing. Uh, 80 pounds is a ton, but it's got a very short power stroke on it. So we're going to get it outside, we're going to shoot this thing at some targets over varying distance, and see if it's accurate enough to use this as a viable hunting weapon. So we're out here shooting the 80 pound crossbow pistol uh, from Rural King. This is the Cobra system crossbow. 
uh, the cocking sequence. It's you know real, real straightforward, real simple. It does have that depression on the back where you release the cocking handle. It's got a small um, kind of finger knurl on the front, and it cocks real simple. Now safety with this thing, you know, it's paramount. You know, anything that you want to keep, you need to keep out of the uh, out of the way of the string. Here's the arrows. And you would slide that all the way back until it's resting against the string. There's also a thumb safety here on top. The thumb safety on this is not real positive. That's the one thing I don't really like about it right now. Uh, it does work. I did try it, but it doesn't really click on and off. It has a real plastic feel to it. Uh, this was a Christmas present. For my son he already took some shots we got it sided in already but it's very accurate pretty impressive actually I'm gonna take a couple quick shots now unlike that Jaguar crossbow that we set up earlier uh, this one was not on uh, as soon as we put it together. We were way high, so it's something you want to make sure you're shooting at a close enough range where uh, you know, you're not going to miss your backstop entirely. Nice trigger pull on this crossbow. Very, very quiet. And the penetration's great. I'm going to show you the penetration here in just a second. One thing about this safety is ambidextrous. I always push it off with my left thumb. That way my uh, hand stays in the firing grip on the crossbow itself. And like any other crossbow, you want to make sure your thumbs are down and out of the way of the string. Okay, let me show you where this thing's hitting. So this has black fletching on this arrows, so they're actually very hard to see. Uh, this thing's shooting slightly to the right for me. We're about 10 yards away. And you see my pattern starting to flail a little bit up and down. We were shooting this on a rest before, and we were pumping them in there. We'll try to get some good groups and come back. But this is just an impromptu standing up, shooting in front of the camera. Uh, you know, real good trigger on this, actually. I was pretty impressed with that. The penetration. is about like that. So we're getting about three inches, three and a half inches of penetration. And these are, this is a two-piece bolt, two-piece arrow. So they are kind of hard to pull out of this. And the, the feather, the rear half of the uh, arrow has a tendency to come off. This rear sight's got a micro adjust on it. You know, we, we changed the elevation and got it down to where we want it. Right now, we're just adjusting the left and right. There we go, see? Sometimes when you make a click, an adjustment on this plastic stuff like this, it doesn't settle until the first shot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then the first shot kind of shakes it into a groove. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with a, a gun the same way, I'll make an adjustment and I'll tap on the scope or something to kind of settle it into a notch.
Now this is the factory arrow. This is the replacement arrows that I bought. You can see this entire arrow is aluminum. This back two-third is plastic and it comes off. Uh, you can see some of them broke on us. Uh, some of them came out when I was trying to pull them out of the target. But overall, this is a great Christmas gift. You know, it doesn't plug into a wall. It brings kids outside. And I think this is a viable hunting tool, I really do. You know, we're shooting pie plate size groups. First time we're using it. There might be a, might be an issue with the arrows on some of these. But you can see he likes it. it it's really a, a cool, uh, you know, cool little crossbow. Uh, I'm really glad he purchased, or I purchased it. I'm glad he likes it. It gets us out here, gets us shooting. You know, dead quiet. This is like slingshot quiet. So I believe, um, you know, anything from coon size down, you know, you stick an arrow in the right place with this thing and it's. I believe it's meat on the table. So this is the Cobra system, a 80 pound crossbow pistol. Uh, you will be seeing more of this. We're going to go test it out uh, in more, more hunting type scenarios. I believe a frog against a bank, this thing would be dead money. Um, squirrels, absolutely. Rabbits, all day long. Uh, possums. Coon, this is the upper limits for something this size. But this is a great system. I suggest you go pick one up. So the rabbit target here, we shot six arrows at it from a braced position, which would be realistic if you were sitting in a blind or something. Uh, I had two arrows skip off its back. It didn't make contact with the rabbit. If that was a real rabbit, you would be able to run up and retrieve it. I had, uh, you know, this would be an absolute kill shot. These two are in the spine, and this one's actually in the target. Uh, at ground level so this would actually you know swept into the feet of the rabbit so you know brand new crossbow pistol you know first time out here practicing you know it would turn this rabbit into uh, into meat you know we're talking about 60 percent of the time maybe maybe 65 percent of the time and that's first time out so that's not too bad arrows are inconsistent uh, we got a lot of them they're inexpensive so you get what you pay for but the crossbow pistol, I think that's a great option. Ethan, what do you think about it? It's good. You like it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what more can you ask for? This is Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. Take care.